So you're obviously here because you want to know whether you can leave your machine unattended. Well, keep watching. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of James Dean Designs. If you are new to the channel, Love Lies at OCNC, make sure you hit that subscribe button down in there in the corner to get all the latest tips, tricks, tutorials, and reviews. Now, you don't have to be on a laser or CNC forum long before you see the following type of conversation. Can I leave my machine unattended whilst it's running? What a stupid idea. But it's going to be running for a long time. Not as long as it's going to take to rebuild your workshop once it's burnt down. And it generally continues from there until either the comments are turned off or the post is deleted. Now, this question really gets under the skin of some people. And, you know, the, the question is, can I leave my machine safely whilst it is running? The answer is no. But if you have to leave it, then do so as safely as possible. And that is what we're going to talk about in this video today. We're gonna to cover two things, observation and control. Now, before I move on to talking about these, I'm quickly gonna cover the idea of pause and resume. It's not really what this video is about, but some people like to pause a job and return later. Now, most of your CNC or laser software will have pause and resume features. In fact, a lot of the control boards and things have them embedded as well. But there are a couple of things I will quickly mention. If it's a CNC machine, usually pausing your job, the spindle will carry on spinning. So it might be okay if you've got to shoot out just to use the toilet and come back, but ultimately not for a long period of time. Also, if you're doing a laser, for example, doing a, a photo and, you know, photo burn, it's quite fine detail. And I can promise you, if you pause a job and return later and start the job again, you will probably see a line where there is a difference from the laser like heating up and cooling down, that type of thing. So pause and resume is kind of okay if you're doing something like cutting parts out. Once it's cleanly finished one cut, you can then pause, resume later on. But if it's anything with fine detail, yeah, 90% of the time you are going to notice where you paused and resumed it. Anyway, put that out of the way. The question we're answering is, can we leave it running safely? Now, the two things I just mentioned, observation and control. Let's start with observation. I have been using one of these for a long time. This is a Yee camera. There are lots of different models and brands out there. I'll put links to the description area below. The other thing I will mention at this point, the um, observation and control, generally speaking, all require you to be on the same Wi-Fi network, no matter where you are when you leave your workshop. That part is crucial. So, Yi camera, this is like a small type of web camera, USB, plug it in anywhere, quite small, light device, you can chuck it in your enclosures, you know, just not going to affect it too much. And ultimately, you plug this in, you install the app on your phone, and then you open the app up to view what is being, um, you know, coming through the lens of the camera. So really easy to do, and, you know, gives you a very clear observation of what is going on. Now, I have just upgraded from this to this one, a Tapo camera. Now, two reasons why I've upgraded. One, this is high definition, so I'm going to get a much clearer vision of what is actually going on with the engraving or the laser when it is operating. That is what I should also mention. Um, the lasers won't really damage the lenses of these either, so you're kind of safe with them. The second thing is this is a pan and tilt camera. So basically what that means is I can tilt the lens down, up, left, right. Just gives me a bit more viewing angle, viewing options when something is operating. So yeah, it just gives me, as I say, it just gives me a few more choices when it's in the enclosure or something like that if I want to pan and tilt it and move things around. So same principle, connects to your phone, you can view whatever is going on. Now, that is the observation. Let's move on to the control, which is actually probably the key part. It's all good watching something going wrong, but you need to be able to stop it from going wrong. So there are a couple of things I'm gonna quickly discuss and an ultimate kill all option at the end. So the first thing is remote controlling your devices. So something like UGS has the pendant feature. This is ultimately where you scan a code on the screen and it will bring up all the controls of that software on your phone that are on the screen um, on your monitor. So you can pause the job, stop it, restart it, move things about, that type of thing. Really useful feature. There is a link up in the corner um, to the video I did previously about this. But not all pieces of software have that. For example, um, Lightburn or Laser GRBL don't have that type of option. So there is a secondary um, kind of remote access option, which I sometimes use. 
For example, if I'm doing a long, lazy job and I have to go back in the house to do, do a piece of work, something like that, I remote desktop onto this PC from my machine in the house. And basically, that opens up a virtual portal window, allowing me to see everything that is on that screen. I'm pretty sure that can also be done on a mobile phone as well, but I'm not gonna get into too much detail, as I say, because it starts becoming a bit of an IT show, and that's not really what this is about. Setting up remote desktop from one PC to another is fairly simple, but obviously the more IT savvy you are, the easier you will find it. So ultimately, if your software doesn't have the remote access function, well, how do you stop things from going wrong? This is my kill all option. This is a smart switch or a smart plug. The way it basically works, your device plugs into the front of it and this then plugs into the wall. Once this has power, it connects to your Wi-Fi network. And in a similar way to the cameras, you install an app on your phone and then you have re um, remote control of this particular device to turn it on and off. So, for example, let's say you go in the house to do something. Use the toilet, for example, and you're watching the camera, you see something starting to go wrong. You switch over to the smart, um, the smart plug app and terminate the power, and that will kill all the power. Now, you've got a choice. You can either just connect, like if it's a CNC, you could just connect the router to it or the CNC machine, or ultimately, you could put like a um, multi-plug on this and then kill everything, including the computer as well. So yeah, you do have a few options. One thing I would say, buy the highest rated ones that you can. This is something like a 2000 watt rated plug. Most of them are much lower. They're like 1200, that type of thing, because they used to run in lights when people are on holiday. But if you are going to run a CNC machine and a PC, get the highest rated one you can. Just losing my voice there for a second. So those are my quick tips in how I I operate as safely as I can when I can't be in the workshop. Now, the bottom line is you should only do this in minimal stints. So if you've got to go to the toilet, if you've got to go and start prepping food for tea or something along those lines, don't do it for long periods because you can guarantee that is when an accident is going to happen. And ultimately, you want to avoid damaging your machine. You want to avoid doing uh, damaging your workshop. So as I said at the very beginning, it is not safe to leave your machine, but if you are going to do so, do it as safely as possible. And hopefully, if you have more tips and tricks than I do, share them in the comments section, because the more people that we can help be safe when operating their machines, obviously that is better all round for everyone. So those are my quick tips for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, obviously comment down below and let me know. Thumbs up, subscribe, all of the usual stuff. Thank you very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons. If you want to get involved, early access to videos, one-to-one -one help, exclusive giveaways, those type of things, check out the links in the description area below. That is everything for today's video and I'll see you all on the next episode.